Hey, digital investors, welcome back to another video where we go over everything that is going on inside of the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. On this one, we're going to go over some pretty good evidence that shows that the Bitcoin bulls bought up the dip, not only retail, but we have institutional investors, some data that points that that institutions are buying up this dip using the dips as a buying opportunity. Uh, as we know, when we're in a bull market, we do get dips along the way these dips can be anywhere from 20 to 40 percent and seeing how aggressively this dip has been brought, bought up it kind of you know gives some more confidence into the fact that we are still inside of a bull market because obviously if these dips weren't being bought up uh, if the price continued to roll over and roll over that would be some very huge red flags some very big warning signs about whether or not this bull market is going to remain in a bullish structure but as of right now with the dip we've experienced we are still in in, in a great bullish structure so they say Bitcoin gained for the second day straight, easing concern that a big sell-off earlier this week might have further to go. Prices fell 15% on Monday and Tuesday, the biggest two-day correction in 11 months, and some analysts were quick to warn for the potential of a drop to 40 k The number one crypto's price went as high as 52000 in the past 24 hours after more than 13000 Bitcoin worth roughly $650 million were moved out of Coinbase Pro. This move is usually a bullish sign for the market. Markets, reflecting institutional investor support to Bitcoin's long-term value as they move their Bitcoin to custody wallets. So interesting, right? And this article here goes over more of that Bitcoin outflows from Coinbase Pro suggests institutions are buying the dip. So let's check this out. Large investors look to be accumulating Bitcoin at bargain prices in the wake of crypto's recent pullback. That's the suggestion of outflows from the crypto exchange Coinbase Pro, which rose to th over 13,000 BTC. The figure represents the largest movement of Bitcoin off the exchange in three weeks. The outflow went to multiple custody wallets, indicating U.S. institutional investors are still buying Bitcoin on the dip. The exchange's custody wallets are directly integrated with its OTC desk. Institutions typically transact over the counter to avoid influencing spot market prices. Hence, the outflows from Coinbase Pro that end up in its cold wallet for custody are taken to represent institutional activity. Okay, so get that? The outflows from Coinbase Pro that end up in cold wallets are to represent institutional activity. So knowing that, the latest pickup in outflows is a sign that institutions remain undeterred by the recent price pullback and are confident about cryptocurrencies' long-term prospects. So as we can see here, this is the Bitcoin price, and this here is the total outflow, higher than, well, not higher than it's ever been, but higher than it's been in a very, very long time coming right on the Bitcoin dip. So it kind of shows that institutions are not scared of this dip. They are definitely not selling the fear, right? Uh, they are definitely buying the fear. And we can go into a little bit more proof of that. We have Square buys the dip acquires more Bitcoin for an additional $170 million. The mobile payment company Square has used the current Bitcoin dip to purchase an additional 3,318 Bitcoins worth about 170 million USD. Combined with Square's previous purchase of $50 million in Bitcoin, this represents approximately 5% of Square's total cash, cash equivalents, and marketable securities as of the December 31st of 2020. Not only that, but we have MicroStrategy has now amassed a $4.5 billion Bitcoin fortune. Okay, so we have some interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, while the dip was happening, I kind of stayed quiet. I kind of wanted to see how everybody was reacting. And I think one of the main things I saw is you, you have your hodl people, right? Your diamond hands people who are never going to sell. But you also, you know, to get this dip, you have to have that fear. You have to have that uncertainty. And the main thing that I think I saw was you had retail saying that they were going to sell now to buy back in lower. Um, the problem is, is that right now we're not in a bear market. In a bear market, that could work, you know, very well. Sell to buy back in lower. You don't want to hold the bag for some weird reason during bear markets retail has the diamond hands mentality and then now in a bull market that mentality has gone to you know i'm going to sell to buy back lower i i don't understand where it really comes from i i really do think it's just emotion i think it's false narratives i think it's people who just they don't really understand the market yet uh, they don't understand how to play a bull market versus a bear market because there are two completely different strategies 
that you need to have, right? During a bear market, what you hear out there is hold, 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 uh, which gives you massive opportunity costs, right? You have no money on the side to buy as these assets continue to dip lower. And then on, you know, during the bull market, everything's great, price is climbing, and then we have, you know, a 20%, 30% dip, and it's the end of the world. Hence why you have people saying, oh, I'm going to sell to buy back in lower. But, you know, if you're already pulled back 20% and you're selling to buy back in lower, um, how much lower are you planning to get in? Are you planning to get in 5% lower, 10% lower, 15% lower? Uh, what if it doesn't go that lower and now you're sold out of your holdings and now you have to buy back in higher? You know, are you a good enough trader or are you a trader at all to be able to you know, get in on that. If, if your target doesn't get hit, right, your downside target, say you're looking to buy 10% lower, if that doesn't get hit, are you going to know what when you should buy back in, right? Are you just going to FOMO? Um, a lot of times during a bull market, it's going to be much better to sit on your hands and have cash on the side to add to your positions rather than sell to buy back lower because when you're selling to buy back lower, you're already selling a dip, right? So the dip has already come. You are now selling that dip. You are selling that fear. Whereas to the time to sell when there was greed, how come nobody was selling when it was, when the market was greedy, right? When everything was green and nobody was selling to buy back lower, but once it is lower, then they are selling to buy back lower. So it really just doesn't make any sense. Uh, it does make sense to sell the buy back lower if you're selling into the greed, okay? In a bull market, if you're going to trade these markets, if you're going to sell, you want to sell on the massive green days when things are up double digit green, uh, when the market is full of greed, when we are overextended, the RSIs are oversold, you're gonna have a much, uh, you'll have a, a higher success rate selling the greed rather than selling the fear to buy back lower. So I hope that makes sense. Again, in this context, I'm talking about a bull market. For a bear market, it's entirely different. Uh, but for a bull market, if it's already dipped, for the most part, you know, it, it's kind of already too late to sell. And if it does go lower, you pull up the percentages and how much lower is it really going to go? 5%, 10%. So is it worth selling your holdings to increase your bag by 10%? Um, it's usually not, right? Especially in a bull market, especially with cryptocurrencies, because these things pull back, uh, you know, 30, 40%, and then they can go on to explode, you know, uh, three, four, five hundred percent So um, just keep that in mind. I know I'm not the best at explaining this type of stuff, but hopefully, that makes some type of sense. Uh, if any of you guys did sell that fear, just keep in mind we're in a bull market and oftentimes selling the fear in a bull market is one of the worst things that you can do. Uh, if you're going to sell, you're going to trade, I would recommend what I personally do is I my trading portfolio, I sell on the green days, on the greed days, uh, when things are very up, when people are very bullish, when people are throwing their last dime in. Um, that's that's personally when I look to take some profits off the table uh, if, if I'm trading that day. By the way, if you guys appreciate appreciate the content and you like these types of videos and make sure you tap the like and subscribe. This is also the 200th video that I am recording. So really, really crazy. Uh, but we have hit the 200 video mark really insane guys. And we also have Coinbase, their public listing filing their details their 2020 revenue uh, as Coinbase plans to pursue a direct listing on the stock market. The exchange has submitted an S1 report to the SEC commission which details all the relevant data that would help investors conduct due diligence on the company. The document represents the first time that Coinbase publicly revealed sensitive details like revenue and ownership structure. Uh, the filing reveals that the exchange posted a direct revenue of $1.1 billion in 2020, a significant increase from $482 million in 2019. Now, get this, guys, about 96% of this revenue is derived from transaction fees charged to users, with the remainder coming from subscription services, okay? So keep that in mind, 96% of Coinbase revenue comes from their transaction fees. Now, you guys ever realize when the crypto market is going up, uh, Coinbase will send you notifications like, oh, hey, Bitcoin's up 11%. When it's down, it'll send you notifications, along with, you know, if things are selling off, the news that Coinbase shows is very bearish. And when things are going up, the news that Coinbase shows is very bullish because Coinbase doesn't care if you make money or not. The main thing that Coinbase cares about is you just trading, right? Whether you're selling at a loss or you're selling at a gain, uh, whether you're buying high or buying low, Coinbase is making money, okay? That is, again, their transaction fees. If you make money or you lose money, it does not matter. Coinbase is making money every single time you get a transaction fee. So keep that in mind uh, when you feel emotional, when things are scary, or when things are greedy. 
It's just something good to be aware about, right? Coinbase would make even more money if all of us as a collective were emotionally going in and out of the markets, continuing to make trades, okay? Uh, so again, just, just keep that in mind. But with that said, it goes over some more like the company's losses and everything else, but they have filed to go public. So again, you guys know my opinion on this. I think that Coinbase going public brings a lot of legitimacy, much more legitimacy to the crypto space. I think it's already being legitimized, right? I think we are definitely getting some of that mainstream attention uh, because of the amount of celebrities that are tweeting about it, which is uh, really just odd. I think some of the tweets you can tell, like, you know, it's like, are these guys getting paid to do it? Because the way their tweets look, it definitely looks like they're being paid or incentivized to do it. So I think we're starting to get that beginning of the mainstream media attention. And as price continues to increase, as the mainstream media continues to put it out more, we'll see more market participants pour into this space along with institutions. And I also want to show you guys this. This is about IOTA. IOTA, Intel, and Dell present the data confidence fabric in its use cases. So really crazy that IOTA is working with Intel and Dell, right? This is uh, pretty big. Dell Technologies, in collaboration with the IOTA Foundation and Intel, the first demonstration of the data confidence fabric took place yesterday. Based on the IOTA Streams framework, this tech is designed to measure the trustworthiness of data before it is utilized in use cases, such as oracles feeding information into smart contracts. And this right here from at IOTA on Twitter, they say what a great demonstration of the data confidence fabric with Dell Tech and Intel, a real world example of how IOTA is enabling data confidence to be guaranteed from the source. Thank you for everyone participating. In the white paper, which is published by Intel and Dell, the companies named specific use cases for Project Alvarium. These include driving assistance, approving city traffic, the creation of distributed marketplaces, services based on artificial intelligence technology with improved security security, and especially its application in emerging economies where there may be a lack of infrastructure to ensure that data is secured by traditional means. Really, really big stuff for IOTA. IOTA, uh, in my opinion, I think IOTA has just been flying under the radar for so long. It has also been cheap for so long, and now we have seen the first leg up where IOTA is over a dollar. Um, so really, really cool stuff for IOTA. Just wanted to show you guys that, um, what some projects are working on. We also have Logan Paul sends three, uh, sorry, sells 3.5 million in crypto art in just 24 hours through polka dot based project now basically what he's selling is an nft non-fungible token i'm sure you guys have been hearing a lot about this and uh yeah they're getting a lot of steam some of these are selling for a lot a lot of money uh basically paul is collaborating with bondly a decentralized product in the polka dot ecosystem to create his own line of pokemon inspired nfts i know sounds a little bit ridiculous but uh you know the market wants it the market is buying it and that is pretty crazy that it sold for 3.5 million in 24 hours and we also have this people who bought bitcoin in 2017 are becoming the strongest holders says the new data so check this out guys according to unchained's hodl waves chart those who bought three to five years ago are sitting on their investment at the beginning of january 59 percent of all bitcoin in the network were sitting for longer than one year without moving and by the end of the month that number dipped to 57 percent a decrease of around two percent it appears that most of the bitcoin transacted during january was bitcoin sitting for less than three years as the bitcoin resting for three to five years actually increased by 0.8 percent totally unperturbed by the price volatility these are the folks that have been holding ever since the last price spike of 15,500 in january 2018 or from 431 in january of 2016 so we have institutions coming in we have institutions buying the dip uh we have old bitcoin buyers right people who have been buying since 2016 showing to have some of the strongest hands so all of this must be taken into account when we see another dip because i'll tell you guys we will see another dip like we just saw we will definitely see more and how you react to them will really dictate your success in this bull market okay uh bull markets and crypto guys they're very short they are very fast right they don't last long with the bear markets last very very long but the time to make life-changing money in this market happens very quickly so you have to be mentally stable you can't let uh you know news or price or uh, notifications on your phone or exchanges shake you in 
and out of this market. That's why I, I really recommend, I've been telling you guys for so long, make sure you have a plan and write it down, right? A plan in your head isn't enough because on those days when you do feel emotional, um, be, being able to sit down and read your plan can really just, uh, it, it, it can really work wonders. It can really ground you again to remember, you know, what your mindset was because, you know, over a couple of hours, uh, something can happen and your mindset shifts, but you have to keep in mind, you know, after this dip, nothing fundamentally changed with the crypto markets, right? Institutions are still buying. Uh, the tech is still getting better. We have to price in all of this stuff uh, and nothing fundamentally has changed. In fact, institutions and smart money use the dip as a buying opportunity. So I'm still bullish on these markets. When I'm no longer bullish on these markets, I will definitely let you guys know. Um, when I'm starting to sell, I will definitely let you guys know. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of my long-term holdings, um, I'm definitely not selling those right now. I think we have a lot of gas left in the tank. Again, we could have another dip. We could have another dip tomorrow. Um, but as of right now, we are still in bullish market conditions. Uh, the technicals are bullish. So really nothing to worry about as of right now. Our fear and greed index for today, we have Bitcoin in extreme greed sitting at 79. Our price for today, Bitcoin at 49K, Ethereum at 1.6, Cardano at 115. Cardano is uh, definitely outperforming most of the market right now. Polkadot at $33, XRP 46 cents, Litecoin 194, Link sitting nice at $27, Bcash at 530, and Stellar at 41 cents. Those are your top 10 for the day. With that said, guys, that is today's video. If you enjoyed it and you like daily cryptocurrency updates, then make sure you subscribe. Uh, let's see if we can get to 20,000 subscribers. That is the next goal. If you guys are also frequent viewers of the show, you want to show some support, liking the video really does help a ton to boost this video out to more people. Uh, with that said, guys, I will see you all on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.